It would take a lot to knock Roy Moore off the lead tonight, but somehow the president did it. He and Senator Gillibrand from New York in a major feud here. Senator wants him to step down over sexual harassment allegations. Not surprising the president not exactly signing up for that. But where and how he attacked her on Twitter, though, has had jaws dropping. She's responded as well. We're going to fill you in on the he said, she said straight ahead. And the polls, they are open in Alabama for, well, under two hours from now. Can Republican Roy Moore win a Senate seat even though he's an accused pedophile? Also, the Republican attack on the social safety net continues and is making a lot of people feel more unsafe the more they learn. Even everybody and welcome to RFL. I'm Richard French and we do start with that war of words between President Trump and Democratic Senator from New York, Kirsten Gillibrand. And this is what started the feud between the two New Yorkers. President Trump should resign. Uh, these allegations are credible. They are numerous. Uh, I've heard these women's testimony and many of them are heartbreaking and President Trump should resign his position. Okay, now we all knew the president wasn't going to go resign just because the senator said so, although she wasn't alone. She was one of five U.S. senators calling for the president to resign from office. And more than 100 other Democrats want at least a congressional investigation into his behavior. A reminder here, the president bragged about it. We all heard about it. And there is certainly not a single claim it here. There's many people who claim that he practiced this kind of behavior. But the president didn't just ignore it or say thanks, but no thanks. He decided to respond, frankly, the only way that he can on Twitter and going way, way too far. This is what he said, and I'm going to read it verbatim here so you don't accuse me of taking any liberties. Quote, lightweight Senator Kirsten Gillibrand, a total flunky for Chuck Schumer and someone who would come to my office begging for campaign contributions not so long ago and would do anything for them, is now in the ring fighting against Trump, very disloyal to Bill and Crooked used. Many people saying there is a clear sexual innuendo or subtext to what the president had to say, but White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders said, it's only in your mind. Many, including Senator, thinks that it's about um, sexual innuendos. I think only if your mind is in the gutter would you have read it that way. And um, so, no. So far, I haven't found anyone who has said they didn't read it exactly the way that both Gillibrand and others have interpreted it. Okay. For her part, the senator said that that tweet was a sexist smear, and she tweeted this response. You cannot silence me or the millions of women who have gotten off the sidelines to speak out about the unfitness and shame that you have brought to the Oval Office. There is no consistency to the way that these allegations are handled. We know President Trump, he's denying everything, and he's not going anywhere. Roy Moore also denying everything, and he could be headed to the U.S. Senate as early as this evening. But Al Franken, he resigned from the Senate over allegations made against him that he acknowledged. Now, many people say maybe Franken shouldn't have stepped down, or if he did, he did so too quickly, including some surprising people. Zephyr Teachout, one of them. You remember her. She ran for not only Congress, but before that, for governor and gave Andrew Cuomo a scare four years ago. A lot of people didn't see her coming. Here's what Zephyr had to say uh, in today's uh, Times, and I'm going to read a portion of it. Due, pro due process means a fair, full investigation with a chance for the accused to respond, and proportionality means that while all forms of inappropriate sexual behavior should be addressed, the response should be based on the nature of the transgressions. Both were missing in the hasty call for Senator Franken's resignation. She wasn't alone, by the way. Here is what uh, um, uh, Ruth Marcus had to say in the Washington Post, and also she's known as a progressive uh, columnist. She said, what gives me pause is both the rush to judgment and the one-size-fits-all nature of the punishment given the significant differences in seriousness between the Franken allegations and those against Trump and more. Okay. With all that as a backdrop, let's bring in our panel tonight, Democratic Assemblywoman Shelley Mayer. She now running for George Latimer's state Senate seat in New York's Westchester County. Dominic Carter, political journalist and author, Republican strategist Joe Pinion. Okay, first off, um, did everybody read the tweet the same way that I did and not just Gillibrand? The Trump really went there when he said that she came asking for money and we'd be willing to, his words, do anything to get it? 
I don't think there's much ambiguity there. I can't imagine any adult would read it any different way. And uh, I think it is really so be over the line, so over the line. I mean, it w it's sort of been repetitive. Well, well let me say it so you don't have to say the words. The President of the United States called a sitting U.S. Senator a whore. That's the, that's the literal translation of what he said. That, and if it's unclear to anybody, he said when she came asking for campaign contributions that she would do anything to get them. So your mind doesn't have to be in a gutter to get there. I have heard no less than six senators and congressmen on the Republican side of the aisle who all read it the same way. This is from the President of the United States. Well, one thing, Richard, it has nothing to do with partisanship, how you read that. No, but I mean, that this is commander just, in chief, you know? I know, but yeah. I mean, honestly, I think that I'm saying like 99% other than the president's spokespeople are going to see it for what it is and respond appropriately. And I have to say, as an elected official, a woman elected official, I can't think of a time more uh, demanding for us to stand up and say his language is unacceptable. You know, other men have called for him to resign. He only went after Kirsten Gillibrand, Senator Kirsten Gillibrand, who he, you know, really so disrespected that it is hard to fathom that this could happen to me. Dom, I'll get into a second about the political implications of this, but Joe, the day with all the mountains of bad headlines relating to Roy Moore and the Republican Party so conflicted about trying to run away from the guy, some that are willing to hold their nose to him, the president who endorsed him over a lot of people's wishes and all the rest, to go out of your way to command bad headlines the day that Alabamans have to go to the poll and wrestle with their conscience, and then him to say this, in the environment that we're all talking about sexual harassment or worse on a daily basis in all walks of life, anybody who says he's crazy like a fox, he's just crazy. Well, I think that we have to stop working under this assumption that everything that he does is strategic. I've said many times that there is no three-dimensional chess occurring here. I keep I mean, telling even Dominic if, this. He you know, even tries to argue with if, if, yeah. you, if you look even yesterday, we had, you know, an attempted terrorist, uh, a tempest terrorist attack here in New York, or Monday, a tempest terrorist attack here in New York City. The president has yet to tweet about that. The first tweet that came, you know, two hours, the attack was at 7.02. The next tweet was somewhere around 9 o'clock. The president of the United States was tweeting about the fact that there was a fake article and that Don Lemon is a terrible, <laughs> stupid person. So, you know, on some basic level, when you look at it through that prism, I think that we have to stop trying to act as if there is some type of, con you know, some type of thread of continuity between the President Trump that shows up on our timeline and the actual Republican agenda that is trying to be pushed forth. You know, Dom, um, you and I know from covering uh, now Senator Gillibrand that one of the worst kept secrets in New York politics was that her political ambition sometimes would rankle more than a few, primarily Democrats, that she wouldn't wait her turn, some would say, that she'd leapfrog, that maybe she took a few cues for uh, Senator Schumer, that there was not a camera that she those wouldn't like. The, okay. Those are the nice okay. allegations. Yes. But if Donald Trump, said what he said about her, and certainly she wasn't the only voice who was saying this. He singled her out because he saw a potential threat in 2020. He gave her the biggest gift and platform that now she's the face, in effect, of the resistance with Trump. She's not going to go away. Whatever she is, she's tough, right? And for him to make a huge calculated blunder added to the list, but to do this, she's already fundraising on it, and she should, okay? My point is... A bad move, okay? Because now you've elevated one more Democrat here uh, that could have at least sights on your job. It's despicable what the President of the United States hey, did. And I, can I interrupt you and just say, a city councilman in New York would never dream of saying something like this against, let's say, the city council speaker or someone else. No, we don't know anyone, Dominic, but remember, in elected life but, that would say something Richard, like that about somebody Richard, else. I'm going to say something that's unconventional. It's going to get me in trouble. The despicable act is part of what got him elected president of the United States. Now, it's horrible what he said, but I don't think it was that he's crazy. He did this deliberately, deliberately. The, what he's really saying is the few <clears throat> this story has legs. I, I, I'm not going to go into it right now, 
but he's throwing the first shot at Senator Gillibrand. And what he has shown a history of, what did he do to Joe and, and Mika at MSNBC? Yeah. Right. He talked about their uh, relationship, which at the time was an affair. This story has legs. That's that. It's despicable what he did. I don't see how this benefits him or the Republican Party. He's assuring that he's going to be a one-term president, and maybe that's why he's doing it, because he knows there'll be no second term. And, 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 and the bizarreness of this, by the way, was when pressed at the press conference, and I don't fault Sarah Huckabee Sanders. What does she do? She's got an audience of one, right? She's got a... She said, okay, well, if it's just in all our imaginations, where was he going then? He was talking about the need for campaign finance reform and about how lobbying in Washington is so pervasive and we need to curtail it and drain the swamp. I, it, it, well, it is beyond that, insulting the intelligence where they're going with this. It's on some basic level, again, whether it is what everybody from Kristen Gillibrand or Kristen Gillibrand herself to, you know, to Rick Santorum has, has interpreted that as with this a crass comment made to in many ways have sexual innuendos. If it's even just a quid quo quo or quid pro quo, then let's admit the fact that the President of the United States just publicly to millions of people asserted that a sitting U.S. Senator is basically having her votes bought. So I, I think on, you have to at, at least do that prism. And, and when pressed, that. by the way, to that point, when asked in the presser today, well, what exactly um, did this money uh, that you alleged to have given uh, buy you access for? He couldn't name any of it either. I mean, it's just all. It's just a but, but I do think it's important to sort of step back and think about it in the context of our democracy. Because we have people who voted for Trump, to your point, in all, in, in all of our communities. I don't think they bought this. They did not buy into Agreed. this. Agreed. This is over the line. I have many way, constituents way who voted for Trump. Line. I have a very respectful relation, disagreeing with them about him. This is an embarrassment to the presidency and to the office of the presidency. Take the person out. And it's also an embarrassment to the institution of the United States Senate. And like you said, in the Yonker City Council, they would not engage in this. There would be absolute pandemonium if someone accused somebody of this behavior. This is. Uh, really degrading our democracy, and that didn't have to call it on You've that. lived through this um, in your public life, and, and, and I'm sure some of the garbage that you've seen, um, whether it be in Albany or other parts, but for a lot of the guys where there's clear right and wrong, how many times have we asked ourselves, guys, what if that was my daughter? What if that was my wife? My God, in these different, not just with this president, but in the last year, some of these conversations that are trying to be excused as locker room talk or calling all these people liars and everything else. We didn't get time to the second half of the conversation about this moving target and this moving line and how you do, is there such a thing as due process anymore with this? Because once again, the president <laughs> hijacked that debate as well. Okay. Coming up next, all this in the context of what's happening in Alabama as we speak. In less than two hours, the polls will close there. And uh, we're already taking a look at some exit polls. I'll show you the numbers we're seeing. And it's also a fascinating look at the Alabama electorate right now. And when we say that core of 33% that no matter what the president will do is excused, well, that's going to be put to the test by someone he endorsed in the name of Roy Moore. We'll find that out after this.